We talk to people all the time that are moving to Portland and one of the common questions is where are some of the neighborhoods we should avoid? We're going to cover that in this video right now and stay tuned, a few of them might really surprise you. everyone, Seth Marchant and Paul Clem here with the Home Team Brokers. If you're new to this channel, Living in Oregon, we show you what it's like to live in Oregon. And if you wanna get more videos like this, hit the subscribe button, tap the bell, that way you'll get notified. We get people reaching out to us all the time that wanna move uh, to Oregon, and we always love to hear from you. If you're one of those people, you can give us a call, send us a text, shoot us an email, or you can click the link below in the description if you wanna schedule a Zoom with us. All right, so what are some of the areas that you should avoid when you're moving to Portland? Well, we're gonna look at this through the lens of appreciation of home values year over year. Um, the last couple years, two, two and a half years, there's been historic home value growth. Um, and uh, you know, it's been a red hot market. And if you look at the last year, um, a lot of the Portland metro area um, and Portland proper, you're looking at appreciation of uh, you know, 10 to 15% in some areas higher, but in some areas, quite a bit lower. And we're going to look at the neighborhoods in Portland that had little to no home value appreciation and talk about some of the reasons why. So like Seth said, some of these areas might surprise you. And number one on the list is Arlington Heights. Um, so this is an area up by Washington Park, up just back uh, behind downtown Portland. Um, there was actually a, a negative appreciation um, year over year. And, uh, you know, I, I think you know this might surprise somebody be, uh, because you know when you look at the homes when you look at where it is situated close to downtown Portland uh, it looks like it's a pretty desirable area and I think it is a desirable area this is one of those ones that might surprise some people right if you know the area totally yeah these are some of the most like celebrated you know uh, architecture uh, you know and and just you know huge you know 3500 4500 square foot homes um, that are over 100 years old very well maintained you know very beautiful uh, you know area with you know big huge trees and um, again you know you're close to downtown so you can get to a lot of things do a lot of things um, in the city but you're also a little bit removed you're close to washington park and forest park but uh why do you think uh you know maybe the home values didn't appreciate there as well in the last year well i, I think that's you, know, you you said part of it uh you have homes that are not inexpensive right you have, so you have some very uh expensive homes and you're coming off of a year that's a probably a, one of a historic year just a red hot year in, in 2021. So it was probably tough for them to really kind of keep up with that growth. And then you do have, you know, some proximity to uh, downtown, which is typically a, a very desirable thing. But in the last couple years in Portland, Portland, you know, downtown, they've, you know, they've had a rough go, I, I guess yeah. you could say maybe in the last few years. So maybe not so desirable to be so close to downtown um, recently. I'm sure that'll change in the future. But probably just kind of that downturn and then coming off of that just that historic year of uh, home value growth and home sales is, is probably the reason why they, they probably um, kind of had an off year recently. Yeah, I think for this area, you know, probably, you know, the average list price, average sale price, average home value in this area is right at the top end of that threshold where, you know, you're not getting offers that are, you know, 10% over, you know, you're not getting uh, offers that are $200,000, $250,000 over list price. So, you know, a lot of the home growth has been because the market's so competitive and homes are selling, you know, at, you know, so quickly and, and uh, you know, at over asking so consistently that that's, you know, accelerated the growth so quickly. In an area like this, you're not going to get that dynamic as much. So next on our list is uh, Mount Tabor. Um, which is also kind of a surprise, right? Yeah. I mean, Mount Tabor is probably, um, historically, maybe in the last few decades, uh, has been one of the more desirable parts of uh, Southeast Portland. Uh, and the, the, um, that park there, Mount Tabor Park, is, uh, is an incredible park too. It's, yeah. it's huge, it's, uh, there's plenty of places to jog and w run, walk around. Um, so that area really actually has been uh, typically very desirable, but um, has not seen very much uh, 
home value appreciation here in the past year. Yeah, and uh, so this zip code that makes up Mount Tabor, um, it's a little bit of a mixed bag, and I think you have a couple of things going on here. So on the on the west side, um, so the the park, which is huge, and it's actually an active volcano. It's, I think it's the only inner city active volcano in the country, which is oh, kind of right. cool. Um, little uh, fact for the day for you there. Yeah, on on the on the west side of the park, you know, you're around 60th, and you start to get some creeping elevation a little bit, um, and you know you have some really cool old homes hundred year old homes um, as you get up the hill you get some like mid-century ranches and split levels and things like that that actually have a view um, so again you know uh, all of those things would typically make an area pretty desirable plus you have the park um, a lot of those homes might be a little bit uh, not overpriced but out of a lot of people's budget so you kind of have a little bit of the same dynamic as we talked about in yeah. Arlington Heights yeah but if you get on the east side of the park, um, you're right on 82nd. And 82nd, you know, I mean, uh, has a little bit of a reputation. Um, and, you know, if you drive up and down 82nd, you can kind of see why. I mean, there's some great neighborhoods around there, um, don't get me wrong. Uh, but, you know, a lot of used car dealerships, for example, a lot of like abandoned buildings and things like that, you do see yeah. like tents, you do see uh, garbage, you know, you do see things that, you know, at least, um, you know, uh, a first impression for somebody, especially moving from out of the area, generally wouldn't be great. So I think that may make that area a little bit less desirable uh, for a lot of people who are relocating uh, because, you know, they kind of take one look and move on. So yeah. I think the competition may not be as high and that has led to an area like, you know, this zip code where Mount Tabor is, um, see some of, you know, the smallest appreciation as far as, uh, you know, home value growth. Yeah. Next on our list is Coley, the Coley neighborhood. Yeah, so this is uh, about as far north as you can get. It's in northeast Portland. It's not quite as far east as you can get, but the PDX, the Portland Airport, is in this zip code. Um, you also have Columbia Boulevard that is going kind of right through the heart of this zip code. And if you're driving up and down Columbia, it's very industrial, but you do see uh, you know you do see tents you do see things like graffiti you do see things that you know would kind of indicate that um there might be a little bit higher crime in the area uh and south of columbia you know through killingsworth there are some you know more kind of uh more dense residential uh pockets um in that area and there you know there, there are some nice homes there but i think the proximity to the airport the proximity to columbia boulevard is probably what lends to that being another area that, you know, hasn't seen as high of home growth on pace with the rest of Portland. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, next on the list, uh, we have actually the Pearl District. The Pearl District. Yeah, number four on the list, which uh, that one's kind of a surprise, I think, too. And if you're from outside of this area, if you're not from Oregon, uh, that might be one that uh, you may have heard of. You know, that, that might be one of the more kind of maybe popular or well-known uh, neighborhoods um, for uh, downtown Portland. So, and I think uh, the Pearl District, this is probably gonna be similar to maybe like the first one, Arlington Heights. You know, why would such a desirable area experience, um, you know, no, little to no home, uh, home value growth in the past year? Um, we, we know um, our mayor uh, actually lived there. Yeah, well, right? he, yeah, until he didn't. Right. He he recently moved uh, out of the uh, the Pearl District, so it's um it's probably one of the hipper, probably one of the more popular um, parts of Portland. Tons of great restaurants there. Um, it is a place that a lot of people and those restaurants will draw people in from uh, pretty far out. So um, the economy there should be pretty decent. But I think maybe some of the uh, some of the problems that downtown Portland has had over the past year and again those home values probably being so high in the first place kind of capped out a little bit over this past year or so yeah th there's there's a few different dynamics working here um i mean you know the the pearl district and the zip code these are like luxury high-rise condos um super nice i mean 
A big deterrent um, that'll kind of always hold true is you get HOAs of like 500, 800, up to a thousand bucks a month yeah. um, in these areas. Um, and the price per square foot is really high. So, you know, condos aren't typically as competitive across the board historically, and they haven't been in the last couple years along with, um, you know, it hasn't paced the same as like detached single family homes. Uh, but I think what Seth said, I mean, that, that has to be probably the biggest driver because this is like, you know, this is the, probably the one area that if somebody was visiting Portland, you would say, oh, you got to go down to the Pearl District. You got to check out these restaurants and breweries right. and there's great shopping. I mean, Powell's Bookstore, you know, um, kind of all the great things about Portland, uh, you know, when it comes to like, uh, you know, the city really you know the pearl district has it all yeah it encapsulates all of it yeah, e yeah exactly but um you know rioting crime looting things like that uh in particular that were taking place a couple of years ago i mean the, the city is still kind of picking up the pieces a little bit um definitely has changed a lot and turned around a lot i've spent a lot of time there uh this year already um and you know it's it's not what you would think you know based on maybe what you saw in the news in the last couple of years but um yeah i mean you know yeah. I, again it's it's not a surprise that that's an area that hasn't appreciated um as much as some other areas in portland another thing probably too because it is so many condos and you're probably you're paying a higher price per square foot work from home has really driven people kind of out of cities uh to the suburbs because you get more more um for square footage for your dollar right yeah so people wanting more space wanting to have a home office which you you probably don't have if you're in like a little two-bedroom condo um, or at least you don't have much space you know i think that's also probably a contributing factor to it as well yep all right so next on our list uh, alberta that's um that was really kind of an up-and-coming area this past like five or ten years or so like a really kind of a like you know hip area of portland yeah alberta concordia um, you know, there's uh, kind of bordered by 33rd on uh, the east side and then, you know, pretty in close to the city. Um, Alberta in particular, you know, one of the hippest neighborhoods in all of Portland, definitely in northeast Portland. Um, and Concordia has some you know, nice areas as well, nice homes. Uh, Concordia University was there and actually University of Oregon just bought that campus. So there's going to be University of Oregon Portland right yeah, there. I didn't know that. Yeah, so um, definitely a, a little bit of a shock when you look at being an area that hasn't seen nearly as much price growth. Um, I think, you know, th this might to some degree uh, be a, a consequence of a couple of different things. Um, this area has become incredibly gentrified over the last, you know, 10, yeah 10 15 even 20 years probably one of the more gentrified areas and that probably. has driven up home value so much to where there's probably been a little bit of a cap on on home value growth where it's it's pace so you know um so high you know it's 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 gone up so yeah, much for a long time um and you know the price per squit per square foot is really high you do get some larger homes but a lot of like bungalows that are 1200 1700 square feet two bedrooms three bedrooms and you know you're, you're looking at paying you know seven eight hundred thousand dollars in some cases for you know pretty small homes so people are buying the area people are getting into you know being in this you know cute neighborhood with you know a, a lot of culture and arts and things going on shops restaurants you know bars coffee shops all that good stuff um and I, I think it's it's probably just got to a point where the prices didn't necessarily reflect what the homes were worth to some degree. So it, it maybe hit a little bit of a ceiling um, in, in that yeah. circumstance. And it might be a little bit of a, um, a byproduct of things that are going on in close to downtown Portland as well. Um, so, you know, some of the rioting, some of the unrest wasn't just limited to downtown Portland. I mean, this did, you know, kind of yeah. uh, bleed out into some of these neighborhoods that are are really hip and desirable but close into downtown um, as well so um, yeah a little bit of a head scratcher but you know when you look at it from that angle I, I guess it makes sense all right next on the list is uh, we have uh, Boise Elliott right uh, is, is next on the list and I think very similar to Alberta um, you know I, I think you probably have a lot of the same dynamic there um, and even 
probably more gentrification uh, than the Alberta area because uh, in Boise Elliott you have North Williams and, and North Vancouver um, which over the past five ten years I mean um, high-rise apartments um, some of the best restaurants in the city and then you have North Mississippi which is like you know probably my favorite uh, street or neighborhood in Portland um, where home values have grown so quickly uh, because it has been like turning over and developing so much uh, but you know you are close to the city as well close to you know a lot of homelessness kind of bleeds into that area you do have a little bit of industrial um, closer down to like the Moda Center um, and just down beneath Mississippi off Interstate Avenue. Moda Center being where the Blazers play yeah if, uh, if you didn't know. Yeah formerly the Rose Garden um, so I think it's, it's, it has a very urban dynamic in that way. Um, and, you know, I think, you know, we, we did see across the country a lot of people in, in particular in the last couple of years gravitating, you know, toward the suburbs and, and toward, you know, even more rural areas, um, you know, kind of out of the city. So there has yeah. a, a little bit, a bit of a flee from the cities to some degree. And it makes sense that, you know, Portland, um, you know, had a lot of that dynamic because of all the things that were going on. So, yeah, um, yeah, it's a cool area. All right, next on the list we have uh, is Rose City Park. Yeah, um, a little bit of a head scratcher too here to some degree because this is a pretty sought after area, um, you know, very like quintessential Portland neighborhood um, with like, you know, Portland bungalows, things like that. A lot of cool older homes that have been well-maintained and it's bordered by, you know, some of the most sought after neighborhoods in Northeast Portland, uh, like uh, Grant Park, Alameda, Beaumont, Wilshire. So, you know, these are areas that, um, you know, are, are, are very desirable, very sought after and Rose City Park kind of sits in the middle of it. But I think when you look at its spot geographically on a map, what really stands out to me is it's bordered on the south by Interstate 84. Pretty much anything right along the interstate, um, whether it's I-205, I-5, I-84, you're going to see a lot of homeless encampments, you're gonna see a lot of garbage, graffiti, th you know, things that would, you know, to a lot of people suggest there's signs of, uh, you know, p potential high crime. Um, and then you also have Sandy Boulevard cutting right through the middle as well. So Sandy's a, you know, uh, basically a, a four lane kind of main thoroughfare um, that gets a lot of traffic. You know, it has kind of some uh, rundown buildings in some stretches, some vacant buildings in some stretches. So yeah. those are signs that, you know, economically that area maybe isn't as strong, but if you get just north of Sandy or just south of Sandy, again, you can get into some nicer areas. So I think with a lot of these areas, uh, in particular that are more urban or have kind of these main either freeways or highways or roads going through it, um, if you just drove on the main roads, you might get a bad impression, but if you get off the highway, off the freeway a little bit, you know, 10 blocks in either direction, uh, you know, you, you might uh, kind of change your tune a little bit. Yeah, you can find some nice neighborhoods back yeah. there. Next on the list is Monta Villa. Yeah, so actually this is a zip code uh, that includes part of Monta Villa, uh, which is kind of associated with Mount Tabor, um, and Southeast Stark is a little stretch with restaurants. Um, really cool area to hang out. Uh, so I think on the west side of 84, uh, pretty sought after, desirable area, um, you know, in, in particular for somebody who wants to have like a quintessential Portland neighborhood. On the east side of 205, you get into Mill Park, which um, is definitely a different makeup um, and a different dynamic overall um, than uh, the Montevilla area. So again, this zip code, uh, you know, incorporates both of these neighborhoods, but over in Mill Park, you have, you know, definitely a higher rate of poverty, you know, lower household income. Um, you have more density, uh, probably a little bit more crime, um, you know, things that, uh, you know, ultimately would deter somebody from purchasing in, uh, you know, in an area like that. Um, you know, it, it may make sense and, you know, there's probably some nice homes and nice pockets in there too, but I think proximity to 84, you know, having kind of that um, industrial mix and, you know, again, you do see a lot of homeless people in that area. Yeah, um, just being so close to the freeway. Yeah, you know, you see things like garbage, you know, maybe not as main, well maintained. Um, you know, again, a, a, a lot of this, you know, I, I'm looking at it from the perspective of, 
you know, it hasn't grown as much because it's not in as high demand, you know, which is ultimately what, you know, affects uh, or is one, you know, part of that equation of what affects home value growth. Um, and people who are buying, a lot of them, especially people like, you know, maybe you and a lot of people that we work with that are relocating from out of state are just going off first impression. Um, so, um, you know, we can always get into these areas and again, kind of, you know, get off the main drag a little bit, really get a feel for it. But uh, it's not a surprise that this one is on the list. Next on our list at number nine, we've got two left, uh, is St. John's which uh, is a really nice area, yeah. right? And, th and that's also an area that I think uh, some people might be a little bit familiar with uh, or might have heard, heard of if you've never been to Portland before because the St. John's Bridge is probably one of the more kind of like iconic bridges. Iconic. Just, yeah. yeah. And then you've got Cathedral Park just below the St. John's Bridge, which uh, is a destination spot for um, a lot of photography. Yeah. People shooting the bridge, people shooting engagement photos. Although I've, I've read online uh, people saying not to go in the park after after dark, you know, so take from that uh, what you will. And that area has really been um, pretty hot in the last five or ten years. It's also been like kind of one of the more up and coming kind of hip areas. So yeah, a little bit surprising to see that. Um, but I know um, the crime has been a little bit higher in that area, too. of uh, 10 of the, we we're calling it worst neighborhoods, but this is, you know, it's not exactly- Well, worst, um, worst neighborhoods to buy. Worst neighborhoods to buy um, based on home value appreciation over the, over the past year. So, and just to be clear, if you do have an interest in any one of these areas, we're happy to talk to you about it. Um, we're happy to give you more information on those areas. Um, anywhere in the Portland metropolitan area that you're thinking about moving, you can give us a call, send us a text, shoot us an email, or click the link below to schedule a Zoom. And if this video helped you, give us a thumbs up. You can leave us a comment too if you have any other questions. We'll respond to the comments. And uh, make sure and subscribe if you wanna see more videos about what it's like to live around the Portland metropolitan area. Thanks for watching. We'll take, talk to you next time. Take care, everyone. All right. Bye.